I was thinking about the Justin Bieber stuff accusations, so I I, I took that oh, two steps. I don't, I don't imply know. that about switch hitting, but uh, playing in the minor leagues, I I'm not a, I'm not for. <laughs> that was funny, Billy. Was Maybe funny. I should do a set. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most white guy thing you've ever said on this show. Tell Maybe one I up. joke. Maybe I should get up there. All right, uh, let's talk about macrodosing starts. Three, two, one. Okay. Well, well, you can't just you start. Air, you told recording? me you were recording. You told me you were recording. I never That's said you. that. I yes, never said that. You said that. Okay. Yes, you did. You want to bet? You want to bet? Yeah. You did bet. say that, yeah, Arian. I'm sorry. Let's you bet. Did. Let's you bet. Let's bet. bet. No, Arian. Arian. I'm one for one on bets. No, I wish someone warned me about this. All this talking. Let's bet. I'm about to record right now. Hold on. Okay. But let's bet. Are you okay? No, Arian. Before we started, you want bet? You told me. You told me. I said, I have a take that I would like to get off before we start recording. And you said, I'm recording, so let it rip. Oh, that was a joke. Yeah, oh, I man, didn't know you, that. You, you, said, it, that. Arian, you said it, but Arian, you said it, but Arian, you said it. I, I, I said, a bet. But I never said I was recording. Okay, I can see where you get to. Get in Billy mode. I can see Foster. No, no, no. We literally had just hopped on. We literally had just hopped on. We literally had just hopped on. And you said, I have a take, but I don't want to put it on the show. Is this a safe space? It's like, nope, I'm recording. It was just a joke. It was a joke. I, I thought that recording. I didn't know that you weren't recording. So. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. That's true. Football, that's dude. true. No. You didn't. So it was, it, was a, it was a joke. I did say I was recording, but uh, fuck <laughs> yeah. Oh. Make him wear a Trump hat. <laughs> yeah, you got to wear a Trump hat. And where are we at with this? Did those hats? Did hat. we get those hats? It's coming that? from China. Did you order it? China. It's coming from China. Did you order it? I. So it's not coming <laughs> from anywhere. You could always now it's coming Amazon. from China. What? Okay, now it's coming. Now, it just, now it's coming. Do not come. <laughs> do not come. All right, well, welcome back to I'm Macro Dosing. Come. It's <laughs> Nano Dosing. I ain't going to come. <laughs> it's, it's January 8th. Everybody say, I'm going to come real quick. Just get out of I'm going to come. I'm going to come. Actually, we don't all have to say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's January 8th. Uh, happy anniversary, Big T. How'd you spend your Saturday? Um, you know, uh, happy holidays to all those who observe. Um, <laughs> it kind of it it doesn't hit the same on a weekend like it it, it was just Saturday. You know, like yeah. if that was on Thursday, obviously big day to celebrate. You take the day off. You go do what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. But you know, just a normal Saturday, just kind of mm -hmm. hung out, kept it low key. Yeah, watch college basketball. Yep. Um, so. Before we started taping, Billy sent over the doc. Thank you, Billy, for sending the doc of topics to discuss on nano dosing this morning. He sent it over very early. Um, and one of them is a William Penn statue. And it's going to be removed and not reinstalled. The National Park Service says it proposes to rehabilitate the park on site in William Penn's home to provide a more welcoming, accurate, and inclusive experience for visitors. So this is uh, from Steve Keeley. He's a reporter for Fox 29, Philadelphia, Flophia. Um, and so we're, we're talking about that before and whether or not like Abraham Lincoln statues will eventually get torn down. And then Billy started quake explaining to me the Quaker religion. And, uh, I, I actually have a take about this, Billy it might surprise you. I mean? don't, I don't think that William Penn would want a statue of himself. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. actually a very quake that, that actually yeah. makes the most sense. Yeah. If you're going by like what the Quakers truly believe, I don't think that a Quaker would want a statue of himself. We would not want to be. As a Quaker, we would not want to be revered upon. Like every person's flawed, every person fucks up. I, my my take on statues in general is just that statues are weird. Like you build a life size replica of somebody after they die, and then people go and they stare at it for a little bit. Kind of kind of a weird thing to do. Statues are kind of hype, though. Name I mean, one statue that's hype. Uh, well, how, artistically. How can a Oh yeah, the the Jordan statues. Jordan pretty good. statues. Yeah, awesome. like come on. Ooh. Yeah, athletes doing something athletic. But like That's back in cool. the day, that used to be like war heroes and stuff. Yeah. Like Bad if so, idea. like I hope one day to do something to help the population of the world so much that they put a statue up of me. That would be. That would. What's be that hard. gonna be? I don't know. 
I just hope to get there one day. You want a statue, bro? Like I don't know. It's just it's like seems like cool. I want like like then like your 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 uh descendants can be like, hey, I'm related to that guy. And then everyone's like, whoa. Some fucking flex when you're not even here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a flex when you're not even there. And then your descendants get to walk around feeling superior to everybody else because they're like, yo, my great 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 grandfather has a statue. Yeah. Maybe if Uganda wins the gold medal in flag football in like the year 3000, they'll put up a statue of Billy in, in Entebbe. <laughs> well, Kampala. Kampala. The, 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 the Uganda, we were actually talking about the Ugandan football hall of fame is going to have a <laughs> Anyway. Um, but yeah, no, William Penn, the thing is like, what do they, what do they want to take it down for? Like just to honor. I, I don't know exactly why. But it has to do with like being more di- diverse. But man, just just find out why before you talk. <laughs> I know, I know. But they're taking said, it down. I don't know I why. Just honor... some... That could be it. But just let's let's let's, let's, start, let's find the exact. Let's start let the new the year right, Billy. How about this? Okay, okay. Make sure you know what you're talking about before you talk. You know I was right? doing. And he said, "They are." I don't know why, and then just started. Talking. They're replacing it with a park about Native American history. There's no, but there's no reason. That's the reason. Well, I think that's the reason. I'm okay with that. It's just William Penn out of all the people, like, look, Civil War statues, totally understand. Like, guys with problematic pasts, totally understand. Like, William Penn, if you understand the the Quaker religion and a lot of their steps towards abolitionism, and, you know, even Voltaire commented that William Penn created the most diverse, uh, you know, colony with minority rights and everything like William Penn is the guy in, you know, the, those settlers in general who kind of like embodied a lot of the ideals that America put forward into the new centuries about diversity and, you know, trying to bring everyone up. Like, yes, we finally, you know, it took a long time, but William Penn, like, why script- people came up with this shit? Yo, okay, wait, this shit quill, to quill to paper. William Penn did a lot for you know. Explain this everything. shit to me, like, because I don't give a fuck about statues. Tear them down, pe- keep them up. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I've never walked by a statue and was like, oh my god, I, I don't care about statues. But explain this shit to me. Why does it rub white folks the wrong way so bad? Like when people are like, yo, he was a racist. Tear it down. Like, why does that bother people? I I, I don't understand. Or, or or like when you talk about the forefathers or the. You know what I'm saying? The founders of the country like, yo, they were they were racist. Like, why does it bother people to to admit that it was there was just a bunch of racism back then? Like, what's wrong? I don't wanna, like why is that problematic? I I I agree with you, but William Penn isn't one of those people. I, I don't know nothing about William Penn. Right, I'm right. Just, that's, I'm talking about statues yeah. well, in general. I, the statues. I know I know like a little about William Penn. And he Talks was instrumental in, in founding the Quaker religion and um, you know, did a lot of things with education in the United States. Uh, but he also did own slaves. Okay. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. He he wasn't like a – I Wait. and you don't want to say – you don't want to say like, oh, there's differences between slave owners. I mean, but I, there's, he there's only, nuance. He there, was, there's, there's nuance. There's nuance. He's a good slave owner. He, slave. he also did free his slaves eventually, but he did own them for a period of time. And I don't think he owned many. Change, I, th- I think change. he owned – he owned, you know, I think less than ten. But he he did free them, and that's important, I guess. It it wasn't like, you know, I, who which founding father was it that, I think James Madison actually didn't free his slaves even when he died. He's like, no, they got to stick around. Sorry, um, but he did. William Penn did free his slaves while he was alive and still very active. So he recognized the errors of his ways. Put it that way. Yeah, hey, growth, man. That's all we can ask for. And you look, you look debilitated, Billy. You found out your man. Well, no, I thought he was. I thought like he was. He's one of the good ones. Because I, I assume because he was a Quaker, most a lot of Quakers became abolitionists. Yeah, so. that's 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 what be that's what be killing me is like when you talk about like Abraham Lincoln or all these all these old motherfuckers. All of them were racist. All of them. Like, and when I say racist, I don't mean like like cause term terminology is kind of like evolve and grow after time, like. Back then, there was the common thought that black folks were inferior, which is the definition of racism, right? But it was a very common thought. So, like, I don't understand the 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 pushback from people. Be like, yeah, but they did great. Sure, it's fine. But like, why do we have to like 
honor this bullshit. I don't, I don't understand it. I, I just I would wish somebody could explain that shit to me because I, I build statues of scientists, bro. I think it's like, because do, you you want to you want to be able to honor something that somebody did without having every other thing that they did detract from the important stuff. I think that's what people get upset about sometimes. I feel like that's that's cool. I, I feel like that's that makes sense. Like in today's day and age, like when you go back to a uh, somebody Twitter, like from seven, eight, ten, fifteen years ago, then it gets like, come on, fam, like get out of here with that shit. But like to have the worldview that an entire race was inferior, mm -hmm. that's like not a. I called somebody gay one time. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not yeah. a. That's that's not the same thing. And so like, I, I guess I guess I guess. I don't know. I like I said, I don't give a fuck about statues. It's just it's just fascinating to me why it bothers people so much. Like, like if if there was some black dude in history that was that like if I found out Frederick Douglass like had some of his own slaves, I, I I would untie my emotions to the fact that he was probably a piece of shit too. Like I don't care. Like why do you care so much? I don't not y'all. I'm just saying the general po positing that question out there. It's just not that big a deal. Like who gives a fuck? We founded the country. We don't got to suck these dudes off for the rest of the time. Like, it is what it is. I think some of it has to do with one day we think that we may be judged by future standards. Absolutely. You're absolutely all, going to. But our, all of our accomplishments, if you have any, and, like, you try to accomplish things in life, right? Like, to try to do good, do your best, might also be written off in the future if we set the standard now that, you know, a lot of stuff can be taken down and, you know, sort of not like erased, but just like take, take, like taken away. So like, what's the point of even accomplishing <laughs> Nobody, anything? If no, Nobody's going to take away the fact that they founded this country. Everybody knows that. It's just, you don't have to be like, he was a good guy because they weren't like, there's nothing wrong with that. Piece of so, great things. We you separate the art from the artist. We have this conversation on the yeah. all the time. OJ was a badass. We say this all the time. Yeah. But he's, the he's juice probably probably allegedly probably OJ still has does it doesn't OJ have a statue? I doubt it. Wait, I don't know. A statue. Are you talking about the Heisman Trophy? <laughs> he has a statue. In, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> I don't know what the statue of him. I don't think there's a statue of OJ. <laughs> um, yeah, ever... there is. Oh, is, is there? Flavo? Wait. Was mm -hmm. Flav it? owns it? But I think Flavor Flav owns the statue of OJ Simpson. That's that's not in my bingo cards of things I would have said. <laughs> yeah, <actually>. wait. <laughs> okay, I remember this wrong. It's yeah. only like two feet tall. It's not like a. No, no, no. It's, I mean, it's, there's life size. Oh, yep. There it is. Yep. It's yeah. It's an OJ statue. Okay, so, so his Flavor statue Flav was owns... taken down. Oh, oh, so OJ did have a statue. Oh no. Is this? Wait, I'm just I'm looking. But like Here's a question I like I like for you to answer, PFT. Yep. What? Two hundred years from now, when they're judging this society, what do you think they're gonna be like? Oh, they are. They were horrible people. Is mm. there anything that we're doing now that they that they'll judge us for two hundred, three hundred years from now? Yeah, I think a couple of things. I think hoarding food is mm. probably gonna be one of them, and going along with that. Uh, like treatment of animals and eating meat. I'm terrified. I'm terrified that like 200 years from now, 300 years from now, my great, 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 great grandchildren are going to be like, my great grandpapa PFT. Grandpapa. It's a dark stain <laughs> on this family, but he, yeah. he yeah. publicized how he liked his steak cook. And you could, you could go to his Twitter and see all the pictures that he has of cow flesh that he seared in his house mm -hmm. that he then ate and encouraged others to do the same. I agree with that a thousand percent. And rightfully so. I I think there's another thing, like there's a current very widespread sort of oppress, like this is going to sound crazy, but yeah, where right. things are moving with AI, robotics, uh, and technology, I think one day we will have like robots will get to the point with ai where technology they'll become a carbon versus non-carbon being debate and whether we should give you know ai robots the same rights as carbon individuals humans and i think that's going to be the next big thing where then they're going to look back in history and be like 
everyone was abusing these tiny robots they kept in their pockets they were yelling at siri they were taking pictures of their junk and like sexually assaulting robots type stuff and oh making that... making the camera look at your penis without consent yeah like we're, we're gonna have all these things about yeah i know it sounds crazy but it does when, sound crazy as shit. you know like like so, like we're talking through robots right now and they're not consenting to any of the takes that are getting off right now. It's like the the uh Rocco's Basilisk type thing. Yeah. But don't they have to have consciousness before they can ha- well, be considered an entity like a, That's a very sentient? anti-carbonist of you to to think that a, a, a computer software system can't have consciousness, Arian. Pro-carbonist. We're carbon the, beings. The AI that we are talked to that we I mean, that we talk to right now they say they don't have consciousness. Well, we say I, that, but maybe a future version. Also, Billy, what about in the future if we realize that right now what we're doing is a simulation, so we're actually living in a simulation, and now we're turning against our own simulation that we've created. You no, know, like we're on. turning you, against... You an inception on me. Did you say that again? Yeah, yeah. So, like, right now we're living in a simulation, right? This is a computer simulation that we're all in. And then we have the fucking balls. We have the nerve to treat the computer simulations that we're creating like second class citizens, even though we ourselves are also a computer simulation. Well, I think that's oh. going to be time the out. argument. Billy, the... did you, do you have the pink Starbucks Stanley Cup? <laughs> Is that what that was? It's It's a, it's a pink one. Is it that's not the Starbucks one though? Okay, not the Starbucks one. Hold on, is this the one where like all the white women just like yeah. running yeah. each other over in yeah. Target for? Yeah. yeah. What? It, why? Is, what is going? On? I missed the whole shit. I saw Look, something on my. I cannot timeline. answer for the white women's sins on this one. I don't know. I, I don't I think understand. I can I'm just speak genuinely for the white curious. <laughs> Wait, don't you, Madeline? Don't you have one? Yeah, but I wasn't like running people over. In this one is just because it was like there was like a Starbucks stanley collab so the white women wanted the starbucks one that was like red and pink it's a it's a valentine's Valentine's day Day edition so that was part one and then part two was they there was certain colors or something at target and the white women were also going ballistic for that i cannot answer for those sins of why they were so crazy about them (laughs) i don't really get it either i have mine i got mine as a gift as well i didn't i didn't go crazy for like mine they like a hundred dollars and shit, ain't they? No, they're like forty. Well, they're forty five, which is like insane. But they they're they're selling them on eBay. They're like reselling them for like two hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I saw I saw this video of a dude like kind of explaining what was going on. I didn't understand what was going on. This that's what's wild world we live in, man. <laughs> from from a utility standpoint, and this is coming from a guy who wears a lot of cargo pants Mm. from a utility standpoint the stanley cup is goddamn amazing like no because it spills yeah but it it is a good cup you it doesn't spill see Mackenzie has a different allegiance to a different water bottle brand yeah so yeah so she's not one of us you're a yeti gal no i have this one called awala it's like a w o l a or something um but i think the stanley's just for like aesthetics honestly I, I disagree because and I wouldn't weapon, be drinking yeah. out of a pink cup if I didn't believe in it. That is true. That I want to get back to Billy's is. take where he, also you should preface every take you have was as a guy who wears a lot of cargo pants. <laughs> let me just say. But, Keep the William Penn statue up. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but tell, tell, me, uh, tell me from a utilitarian standpoint why the Stanley Cup is legit, Billy. Um, well, I, there's an example of a video of a car caught fire. Um, and the Stanley's ice in it, uh, didn't melt and the mm-hmm. sta- the top of the Stanley, which is made of plastic was melted, but the main stainless steel body was intact and the ice was still frozen in the cup. Mm-hmm. I will agree. I, I do. Will... You, do you need that? Well, <laughs> you know why I like that? Because I drink a lot of water. If you're a tank operator <laughs> and you're planning on doing Iraq part three <laughs> and you're going to be on the desert for a couple of weeks, you're going to want that water icy cold. No, but I'm telling you, like, as a guy, the, the ice stays cold in the cup. So whenever you're refilling it and look, cold water is kind of hard to come by. And beca- I, I never really care. Is it? 
like super cold water. Do you <laughs> like that? First of all, because like I didn't ice know cold there was water a shortage sucks. of cold water. I missed the memo on the cold, cold water. I can no, go no, get like, cold water I'm talking right now. Cold. I'm talking like I'm sipping we're, on this. We're thing. talking. Yeah, I've I had Broach. cold water for breakfast. I went downstairs. And I put ice cubes in a glass, and then I I poured water into the glass, and it was cold. Yeah, but then you don't well, you have don't to know keep how putting lucky ice. You are, man. Okay, so wait, I just got uh, an ice maker. Wait, wait, wait! Just a couple but before you finish. Billy just opened the cup and looked in it, and had a really dejected look on his face, and then put the top back on. So I think one, the ice is melted, and <laughs> t uh, two, uh, this is just a personal take of mine. Uh, water is exceedingly better at room temperature. Then oh. now even like no, a I water agree. bottle in the fridge is good, but ice water like if you fill up a giant cup with ice like that for water, it's too Trash. cold. It's too cold. It's Trash. not no. good. Stop it. That, that is, is it's cold water. I'm on that is water. evolutionarily mm -hmm. wrong. It's and room no, it's temp, actually, plastic bottle in the fridge, and then fifty feet of shit, and then we, ice water. <laughs> we are conditioned as a species to like colder water to drink because it means it's usually running water, non-stagnant water, and water that won't get us sick. We're that also is, it's also evolutionary better to drink room temperature water because it rehydrates you faster. And because you, your body doesn't have to bring it to yep. body temperature. Or it just, quicker. it doesn't cool you faster. It does hydrate you. No, it does cool. Your body has to work harder. Right, right. So it, it doesn't cool you, your, your body, like drinking cold water on a hot day doesn't cool you down as fast, but uh, it doesn't, there's no difference in hydration. That room temp with a slight chill. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm with Big T on this best one. Shit. Water's, okay. water's too I'm cold. Great stuff. Also, another beef I've got with too much ice in the water is it, you only get like three sips because mm -hmm. the glass is all ice, mm -hmm. and then you have to refill it again. Look, I I got hooked on the Stanley. I didn't. You guys got to experience it. I mean, honestly, I waking up right there on a Sunday, waking up on a Sunday after you know a nice Saturday. And just ripping your Stanley first I'm thing in the Billy's morning. I'm on Billy's side of this. This is this is oh, me and Billy are locked in. I agree, in. but I think there's other brands that are. There's other brands, but yep, I got my Bucky's 40 ounce tumbler. Works just fine. <laughs> there's something about the straw. I mean, I don't know. It just it works. Country like, as fuck, right there. That sound. It's just fine. That was that was on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> no, but like rolling out of bed and just sucking down some sweet Pause. Stanley water. <laughs> I'm listen. Whoa. I'm a Yeti guy. It's just easy that, to maybe drink that's too. Maybe that's, maybe that's Mega Corp. Favorite. You get that at one of your corporate speaking events that uh, you're doing for a hundred grand a pop. Uh, you don't know about Mega Corp, brother. <laughs> Mega Corp is the best corporation of all time. What do they do? They sponsor Brian Harmon on the PGA Tour, and uh, we don't really know what they do. They just have the name Mega Corp. Mega Corp they Logistics. They, yeah, I think they make. Weapons. This is the fakest company of all time. They do shipping, so they have like <laughs> trucks and shit. But m most importantly, they're called Mega Corp. Freight transportation and, and intermodal logistics. Yeah, so we talked about Megacorp on part of my take and how it's it sounds like a company that's Lex Luthor is in charge of. Yeah, it's like going to bomb the world. Uh, so Megacorp sent us a bunch of shit, and yeah, I love my Megacorp Yeti. Ninety five percent of Megacorp employees would recommend working there to a friend. It sounds like oh. North Korea numbers. Yeah. Oh, so they actually. They they make a lot of money on energy credits like Tesla. And shipping and logistics. Wait, and Stellar the world. Wait, this might be a video game. What is Stellaris? I don't know. Hey, uh You don't want to dig too deep into Mega Corp, Billy, trust me. <laughs> you know what I found out, bro? So octopuses. They uh there was a study that came out that said uh they have PTSD. They have nightmares. So what? they they studied this octopus. Yeah, they're 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 one of the smartest beings on the earth. Mm -hmm. they, they, they there was a study that came out that there was an octopus that got attacked, and um, he was in a cage, not in a cage, in a in an aquarium. Uh, uh you know, a little bit afterwards, um, and as the scientists are getting used to him, and because they they hide when they're when they don't feel safe, when they feel safe, they just out out, out in the open. So while he's during when he's not sleeping, he's out in the open. He doesn't feel any fear from the scientists. And when he went to sleep, uh, they filmed him. And he was like rustling around and, and uh, emitting the black ink when they feel in danger. And then when he woke up, he was fine again. 
and so they he he had gotten attacked by I think I don't know some predator in the ocean, and so they're 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 assuming that he's having like nightmares from when it happened, which is crazy, dog. Do octopus? I mean, in the e in the EU, they recently were trying to like they were thinking of classifying octopuses under the same animal cruelty uh, regulations that most like in te- like large mammals have Absolutely because they're should. so yeah because they're so much more intelligent um and because they're classified under seafood so like harvesting them you don't have to you can't farm like the the way because we don't treat fish like we treat livestock but they're saying like hey like maybe we need to start classifying them like we do octopuses are maybe top five top ten you know at the at the least uh smartest animals on the planet easily yeah that's one thing they'll judge us for like Calamari 200 back. years yeah you ate a lot of calamari back then yeah. you feel good about that it's wild yeah they will but yeah oh there was another study that came out um ivermectin uh was linked to killing over seventeen thousand people what mm-hmm. okay seventeen thousand mm-hmm I I have to push back here because ivermectin is one of the push most back. widespread used medicine, not in America, but in the entire world. You can so, push back all you want to. That's what the study. But seventeen thousand. Mm-hmm. But of, it was it was it was specifically they studied it after COVID hit because of that widespread. Oh, ivermectin can help with COVID. Um, so people were using it at very high rates. And people were using it when they didn't need it because it was for I, for, I forget the reasons as to why it's 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 used, but um was it wait no no wasn't it was it ivermectin let me let me get the study but um uh yeah they they were saying that um because <clears throat> because uh, COVID hit and there was that thing going around that ivermectin could help uh it got overused and a lot of people died because of it I'll, I'll send the study. I believe that because if they were using veterinary medicine, stuff that you can get at uh, tractor supply, just like the tubes that's supposed to be for horses and cattle, like definitely feel like the dosage requirement stuff wouldn't be prop like right. And they may have misused it. But ivermectin is used like, for example, there's communities c- because of uh, river blindness that it was just known that once people hit a certain age, uh, they would just go blind and all like the older men would go blind and they just thought that was part of being old, but it was really because of river blindness. And now with the introduction of ivermectin, the whole community takes ivermectin every day to prevent river blindness. My my bad. I retract. Not ivermectin. Uh, hydroxychloroquine. My bad. That I can see. Okay. That I can see. My bad. Because that malaria medicine is crazy. Malaria. I thought I had malaria over the winter break because I got a sore throat and I was coughing and I was like, Oh shit, malaria is kicking in. Like I, I didn't take my medicine at the right times. And I was like, fuck it. Panic mode just took some of the malaria medicine I hadn't taken from before kind of went away. Um, but it's, but I had crazy nightmares. I hit like sweats. Like I totally thought, and, and that was after taking the medicine, Th- those types of anti-malaria medicine are crazy. Yeah. Wow. So the hydroxychloroquine, is that the stuff that's used in fish tanks? Or is that something else? You remember that? That that was like a big thing for a few weeks. What, bleach? No, it was like, (laughs) I I forget what it was. It might have been hydroxychloroquine. But in like pet supply stores, they had to. Oh, no, that was because hydroxychlorox, I think, is used to clean. uh, And it sounded the same. Okay. Let me, I'm, that's off the top of my brain. It's just, it was something that sound high. All right. Let's, yeah. uh, let, let's move on. I got a, a question uh, for the ladies here. Are we, are we canceling Joe Coy? Okay. So, okay. Did you guys see the Golden Globes last night? Uh-uh. So there's this guy that they asked to host the Golden Globes. Bad choice either way. Nobody really watches the Golden Globes. Me. People just watch. Do you watch them or did you watch them just because Taylor was going to be there? No. Uh, no, I'm a big award. I tap in for award show. You do? What's the, yeah. Let me see Golden Globe. What is it? Award shows are so bizarre. I love them. It's just ho- Hollywood gets together in a room and sucks themselves off. And I love <laughs> seeing the dresses. Oh, yeah. No, it's I'm like big. A, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know about shows. that. I think it was a bad take, man. It's like a... Uh, 
it's like a it's like a it's like a a year in film Review. banquet. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's a kinda, banquet. It's you're, you're talking weird. to a Golden Globe. How's it? Uh, someone who was robbed of a Golden Globe. That's what I'm saying. But like, how, how's it? How's it? I mean, what? Well, explain to me. It sounds very anti-establishment for no reason, but I'm listening. About why it's. I just think it's weird that some of the richest people in the world get together in a room and they're like, "Hey, great job, guys." You guys did a great job. Proud of you guys. So you're against people congratulating each other? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, the well, take, they sure. could they could release like, hey, this one best picture, this one so and so, without like, hey, we need somebody to get up here and like tell these self congratulatory like jokes, but like pretend to try to be edgy. But also, like, it's just, it's a dumb concept, the whole format of the show. What I really hate is when they get up there and they, they do the very serious monologue and they're like, you know, films change the world. Yeah. And what we're doing here is very important work. You know, like when they take it super, super seriously. The Nicole Kidman AMC. Even yeah. pain feels good in a place like this. I love yeah. that monologue, yeah. though. Um, I don't know, man. I think films do change the world. We That's never it. found Coney. That film didn't do shit. Oh, I that, so that actually, one. Uganda. We were talking about Coney in Uganda, and we were like asking people, and basically, every there's sort of been a witch hunt type thing where everyone's been accusing people in the government of being Coney. <laughs> like, he's like he's Coney, <laughs> and it's it, no one knows who Coney, if Coney's a real person, and the person in the video might have not been been another warlord who isn't actually coney oh interesting so it anyone you don't like is coney yeah like he's actually coney and that's what's and he and coney's probably dead yeah i i did read a report that he died of covid which i guess that's good um but he might have died of of uh malaria no one no one confirmed it so i don't know films change the world bring me Co coney's head on a stick because we, we were trying to find Coney when we were out there. Appreciate that. Okay, but yeah, Golden Globes. So um, let's talk. What are you upset about with the Golden Globes? Are you talking to me? I'm talking to, yeah, anyone that has a strong opinion on it. So I, I love award show season. I think it's so fun. I love, I, I love this time of year. Um, Joe Coy, before I get to the Taylor Swift thing, which is not a, as big of a deal as people are making out to be, not a good performance. Absolutely lackluster. There was not one joke that did well. Who is he? He's a stand-up comedian. He used to date Chelsea Handler. Um, Mackenzie just reminded me of. Um, just a oh, I know him. He's pretty funny. Uh, wasn't last night. He apparently got the gig. So this is what I'm more concerned about in this whole situation is that apparently he got the gig 10 days ago. Now, as a premier start of awards season, you are the kickoff of awards show season. What are you doing getting your host confirmed and locked in less than two weeks before the award show that's on you that's on the globes journalist no longer the hollywood foreign press association um so that that's where that's where th this starts to go south is that there was 10 days to prepare then in his monologue which was like super weird and like just fell flat he also then goes and is like well, my writers wrote these jokes and they suck. Like, then immediately turns to like, oh, I'm bombing. Let me just like blame this on the writers. So then that's an odd, that's an odd place to take your monologue after like three minutes of not doing well. And then the Taylor Swift thing happened. And like, that wasn't like, I didn't think that was a big deal at all. Like he just made a joke, whatever. Like, I, I think that like, also the people that are in the audience also try to play up what the host is saying so like they'll be like oh like they'll try to react to it because they know that they're you know on camera or whatever i think that's more of what that was like yeah i'm sure that she didn't love that joke like it's and it wasn't really that funny but i don't think that people are like like i think it was in my brain it was like more of a reactionary thing because like it's the award shows i don't think it was like a i think he i think he was making everyone uncomfortable and she was like just like the vibes were bad in the room so What's, she what was, was the not, joke she like oh t like Taylor Swift is here tonight like we are we actually have less camera angles of Taylor Swift than the NFL like oh the difference between the NFL and tonight is that we have less camera angles of Taylor Swift nope. and it's like that wasn't bad that wasn't bad 
Yeah, like, I don't. He, it seems by all accounts like this guy sucked, but I don't really understand the upheaval about that joke. You I don't. don't I, I don't, don't make either. fun of mother. Right. Well, he wasn't making mother. fun of her. He was <laughs> making like, fun of, of the, the NFL. NFL. Yeah. And I think that's what he made not a statement, but like someone asked him about it, and he was like, "It was supposed to be a joke about the NFL, not Taylor Swift." And I think, I think she was just like, "This guy's not funny." I don't think it was like a "fuck you" thing. At, at least, again, I'm not Taylor Swift. I don't know what she was thinking. I thought it was more entertaining that her, Selena Gomez, and Kelly Teller were like absolutely talking shit in the middle of the ceremony. But um, yeah, no, um, Joe Coy should never be gracing an awards show stage again. Um, and I think that, like, there were certain presenters that had more uh humor and more were were ringing the room together more than he was in the whole entire show so i think that it was just it was bad vibes for him but i i love the golden globes i love the award shows and that's what i don't think I, I can't speak for the whole thing but i don't think that was a bad joke i, I think that was okay right there yeah, like he just like kept making like dumb jokes, and then like, also, he would say a joke, it no one would laugh at it, and then he would like get really defensive. That was, I think, what made the vibe so bad is like he just kept defending why his jokes were good, and it's like you know a joke is bad when you have to explain why it's good, type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I just don't think he was built for it. I also don't think he had enough time to prepare for that, and I think you have to have such. A, there are such a small amount of people who can host an award show. We need to keep that circle tight and and exclusive. Who is that? Who's on the list? Amy Poehler and Tina Fey hosted about ten years ago. They were lights out, so good. Um, I didn't see the clip, but someone said Jim Gaffigan's like Jim Gaffigan. Was funny. That's what I was saying. Jim Gaffigan presented last night, and it was very funny. Um, like he would be good. Billy shook his head no at, at Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. Oh, shut up. Dude. Tina Fey was great. Amy Poehler coming down in the Spider-Man costume. I don't remember. Everyone that. was clowning them that. for that. You a big Golden Globes guy? No, I just remember it. It seems uh, like you might be. Right. But like, I think, oh gosh, who else? Now I'm like blanking. Norm um, MacDonald at the ESPYs was the best. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think, RIP. I think someone like. This would never, ever in a million years happen, but, like, someone like Shane Gillis would be very funny hosting an award ceremony. Like, I think you need to have people who understand what that room is like, and he did not. He did not get what was going on in there. Um, I'll get back to you on other hosts that I think. Like, I think even, like, I also think you should have the host be hosting as little as possible. Yeah. I, I think the host should not be the star of the night. I think they should be a leader that is a keeping the show a facilitator. on facilitator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, the, it was just, it was, it was not, um, a, a good night for that guy. Um, I like that. He threw his writers under the bus. <laughs> what a germ. <laughs> he literally said one of his, one of his jokes fell flat, like in his monologue, like we're talking three minutes in and he was like, well, you know, some of these jokes I wrote, some of these jokes my writers wrote and you guys have only laughed at the ones I wrote. So like, <laughs> so I'm kind of a good recovery right there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm Maybe using that. That's not like, bad. If you bombing, <laughs> if you bombing, that's like a good way to kind of start to like break the ice of you know what I mean? Because like it's yeah, you have bombing. To, one Aaron, thing about I want you bombing, to go watch the monologue and like I watch it. I watch it. Yeah, yeah, I just, see the vibe. It's just such a hard thing. The only reason why I, I'm not saying I, it's an easy job to do, but I'm just no. Saying it's that one of the hardest things in the well. world to do. I, I yeah. I did a um I did a comedy show benefit for. Uh, for when there was a hurricane down here. And I did like a five minute set. I think I found a cure for herpes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> do you have it? <laughs> she tell me. Um, nah, so the cure for herpes is this, man. Um, you just tattoo herpes on the forehead of everybody who has herpes. After a while, It'll go away, man. <laughs> and it's just so hard to control a room like that. And I did, I did well. You know, and I, I didn't bomb. Like, and but like, I can understand how. And I, but there were comics there that did bomb. And right. I've seen, I've seen. I used to go to um, uh, what's that shit in LA? Cause I used to be in LA all the time. And it was a uh, comedy like the store. Comedy club. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Laugh Factory, Laugh Factory, Laugh Factory, and Comic Con. So I used to go to all the time. I was a regular. And what happens is like a lot of a lot of like comics that have Netflix specials or something like that. That's why like if you go there on a random Tuesday, you might see like one of the biggest comics in the world go because right. what they they like work on new material and some of it works and some of it doesn't. And so the really really good ones like can banter off the crowd and like it, you can't even tell that they're bombing. But you know the newer comics. Like I just feel so bad for him because it's like it's it is a it is a hard thing to do to stand in front of people, you know. After they you know they pay they twelve dollars, fifteen dollars, whatever, to go get into a comedy club, and they're just like staring at you, like make me laugh. It's just a very hard thing to do on a on a regular basis. So I guess I got a little soft spot in my heart for comics that bomb. Um, yeah, I just think so when you're a professional, and everybody you're... does it though. I'm talking about from Dave Chappelle right. to. Chris Rock to everybody is bombed. Everybody talks about bombing. And like, it's, it's a very fascinating, there's been documentaries on this shit that I've watched. And it's just a very fascinating notion uh, about comedians and bombing. Like they're like, it's kind of like the a rite of passage. Like you got to go through it. But Aaron, I, I have to do the same thing. I have to host a, uh, an open mic stand up on January 31st in Chicago. Where? So I'm doing five, I'm doing five minutes up top. Where, where, then... Hold on January 31st. I want to go fam. No, you don't have to go. That's okay. No, no. <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, I'm January thirty first. I'm going. I'm Ooh, that would be a great day. Wait, is that to, like uh... your birthday party? It I'm is my birthday, but when's it's not your my birthday? birthday party. January thirty first. You You're gonna do a stand up comedy show on your birthday? That's fire. Yeah. Hey, you yeah. living a hell of a life, brother. Well, it's not my it's not my stand up comedy night. It's like a, a local no, Chicago a thing. Hell of a thing to do on your birthday. That's fire. Oh, is yeah. this the thing with Mook? Yeah. Oh my God! Oh, I want to go now. And uh, Ooh, Nick oh, Tarani's he's he's performing too. Oh, Nick Tarani's gonna be performing. Arian. That motherfucker fun! I'm definitely coming there. <laughs> Wait, go. if birthday party? Can we set up uh, the science fair and stuff that week? Yeah, if you want to come. Sweet. All right, Billy. I'll do half my set about you. <laughs> no, no, that that would, you'd bomb immediately. My friend Billy went to <laughs> Africa, and he thought he was the smartest person in the entire continent. No, that's fucked. Up. Billy, Billy taught Africans how to have babies. No, <laughs> no. Oh yeah, this is gonna write itself. I'm good. I'm okay, good now I'm go. not going. So, do you have any? Do you have any material prepared? No, I'm gonna work on it this week. Hey, work on that shit, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna work hard on it. Feel free to run it by me, man. I'm a, like I used to be a comedy like, bro, like a little. Like at, at any kind of comedy show, I, I I went on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. So like I love, I I, I love comedy. Like I get a little, I get all excited as you can Okay, tell. all right, yeah, I'll run it by you. you should run be it by fun. Me, man. And if anybody out there wants to come, uh, I can pull up the details right now. Actually, I'll give it a little plug. How's that sound? Wait, I want to mark it in your calendars. You uh, know, you're not invited. I hate to admit this, but it is what it is. And I think he's having a good run again. But Chris Delia, you know, he was he was mm -hmm. known to like. Uh, port underage women. Yeah, I used to love him before that. He got caught. Yeah, me too. It, uh, no, I'm telling you, like I was a super fan of this dude. Same. And uh, I, because he used to go like two or three times. He he came in, and this was before he was like super big. But two or three times came in, and he literally just walked on stage. He was like, I don't have any material. Like you, what do you do? And there was some of the funniest like 20 minutes I've ever been a part of of any comedy show I've ever seen dog he was so talented at bantering on the club um in in, in the clubs and the, the, what killed me is like when I watched his specials he didn't he wasn't as funny as the specials as he was like in them like laugh factory sets but he mm -hmm. was just one of the most brilliant comedians I've ever seen uh like banter off of the crowd and just like improv it, it was he was amazing I bet you'd leave a Chris D'Elia statue up <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. Hey, Laugh Factory, Chicago, January 31st, 3175 North Broadway, 8 p.m. It's going to be myself, Connor Mook, Nick, Chris Bader, and special guest Hank Lockwood. Oh, oh that night. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does yep. he have to do I'm, his I'm going to get my ones? tickets because that's what I have to sell out because. I just tweeted and, out right now. So oh, you just you tweeted out tickets. shit. I need to get tickets. Um, we could probably get you on the list. Yeah. Okay, hey, okay, get me on the list. It's my birthday okay. on Saturday. Hey, hey, put me somewhere. Don't don't be sitting me in the back, though. Put me somewhere nice, guy. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we can do. I mean, I'll buy it, but I mean, okay. All right, we got you. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm. 
I think I'm going to get nervous the closer it gets. Oh, a thousand percent. But right now, I'm feeling like this is going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Five minutes. Also, I, I'm thinking to myself, five minutes not that long. Five minutes is an eternity when you're up oh, on stage by yourself. It's a fucking, that's a lot, dog. It yeah. Lot. I'll send you, I think I have it. I'll send you one of the jokes that I did. What if I steal your jokes? Steal it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, Cedric I'm, not, I'm not I'm not a Cat Williams, you know? <laughs> Dude, oh, the, let's get Cat Williams on macrodosing, please. Okay. Oh, oh my God, if we can. What every, every five minutes, he was dropping another just insane story. <laughs> Maybe the podcast, I would say that's the best podcast appearance of all time. I stopped believing in the Illuminati. Dream. He now just made me think it's real again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that that stuff he said about ludicrous. I'm like, holy shit, yeah, ludicrous is bad at acting. Why the hell does he keep getting in these movies? Well, they he's not he, that bad. He's not he's that not bad that at bad, acting. But like he, he's in some weird like he's great in uh uh Fast and Furious, but like he's just in some random movies where it's like like what well, what the hell's going on here? He also crossed a few lines, I, I'd say. Like, what he was saying about Ludacris, that was kind of fucked up. It's like, we'll give you $200 million, an ugly, light-skinned wife. That yeah, was kinda... he, said, he was saying about all, all, like, major players, like, Kevin Hart, Steve Hart, like, all these major players, he's like, you get you a light-skinned... He was he he went in like some like I didn't even know what he called them but like you you saying that the 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 wives were there like handlers and controlling them. No, yeah. Was, also, Ludacris' like wife is, is very attractive. Yes, I don't. Know, I've never even seen. Luda. For the record, good job, well, Luda. Mm -hmm. Also, he uh, he was then implying that uh, P Diddy tried to have sex with him. I'm here for I'm I'm here for understanding that story. But uh, <laughs> that's not that's not unique to Cat Williams. If there's so many stories about like yo Diddy, Diddy's parties, man, I don't really know. And, <laughs> and and one time he was on I think it was Drink Champs. He was on Drink Champs with Noriega, and Noriega has his podcast named Drink Champs where they sit there and have drinks with people and they, you know talk about the rap industry whatever. And Diddy got loose, like loose, and you could you could see Fabulous who was a rapper. Uh, you can see Fabulous like kind of like yo, this nigga tripping. Like so he was like uh, he'll he'll he said uh, he said you ain't never party with me, man. You ain't never party with me. He's like, what you talking about, man? I was I party with you. He's like, yeah, but you ain't really party with me. Oh, and you could you could tell they was like, hey, yo, man, this dude tripping, dog. This shit is weird. <laughs> but what yeah, that's that's kind of no, man. Did he? I mean, I don't know, but this is uh, you. It's it's not the first time I heard somebody say did he. He, you know, he hit both ways. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking, speaking of pedophiles. <laughs> whoa, whoa! I didn't say, I didn't say that. No, no, no. I, I was I actually switch hitter. He, that he, was. No, 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 I didn't mean that like that. I didn't mean I was, that like that. I was thinking about the Justin Bieber stuff accusations. So I, I, I took that I two know. steps. I don't, I don't imply know. that about switch hitting, but uh, playing in the minor leagues. I, I'm not, a, I'm not for. <laughs> That was funny, Billy. That Maybe funny. I should do a set. That was funny. <laughs> that was the most white guy thing you've ever said on this show. Maybe I should get up. Joke. Maybe I should get up there. Uh, no. Um, but the only thing about getting back to Chris D'Elia, the craziest thing about that whole thing is like, okay, you're you're committing crimes behind closed doors. Facts. The cockiest, like most narcissistic thing that he did was that he played a guy who was a pedophile on you. On yeah. a, he, he had a role. Like, Crazy. He played himself on you, basically. Crazy. It was like actually the same exact thing. Because you, you was one of my favorite. That was one of my favorite shows. I, I yeah. binge watched that shit. Did he start and creeping after he was on you? Or I think it was the same time. I was before. around the same time, I think. Yeah, like the, okay. it was simultaneously yeah, I think happening. he was creeping before, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean... That's it's wild. Still really bad, but if he had done the role before, would you think differently? Like, oh, he like realized how easy it was, and he yeah, that'd was be bad like, too. Yeah, yeah, that'd be terrible. Think, equally, I don't know. I think he was like thirty something at a time. I don't think that just happens to you in your thirties. I think yeah. that's just what it is. Like you just have an attraction to younger jumps. I remember he had a joke in one of his specials one time that he was like, "Oh yeah, like I've never had a drink. I don't do drugs. Like I have." no vices it's kind of crazy like I, i'm this crazy dude that has no vices and it's like no yeah you, yeah, you did <laughs> yeah you that's if you have no vices you got skeletons in the closet so, yeah mm -hmm. 
That's why I feel comfortable oh, about all my, I would like people that knowing be, all my vices. I like that working <laughs> hypothesis, though. I want to test this out. I like this. What? If you have no vices, you got some skeletons in the closet. I, yeah. I didn't make that up. Someone oh, else did. I like that. That's No, absolutely. That's anyone who's like Everyone pristine, like Mormons. That, never mind. That's, that was random as fuck. Well. Like, just... like the Mormon lifestyle. <laughs> no alcohol, no coffee, no nothing. Like they're still, you know, drinking tons of sugary beverages in their Stanley cups. <laughs> like they're still, you know, a little more loose with it. Um, but like, yeah. Loose with what, Billy? Uh, monogamy. Historically. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, a little loose with it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's why, you know, let's, let's, can we get into the Epstein documents? Because I just found out the most recent release about, uh, yes. that we, came before the show. It's absolute bullshit. Real quick. I just sent my, a little clip of my stand up mm -hmm. to the, to the group. So check okay. it out when y'all get a chance. I'll check it out. Um, in, in the most recent release, Billy, you said, uh, there's some information about Stephen Hawking on there. Before we yes. started taping, I asked the question, is it possible to be assaulted by Stephen Hawking? <laughs> like physically, could you prove that in the court of law? Yeah, you could. That he didn't do it physically, but if you're involved with someone who is coerced with threats of backlash, that's, that's, violence. That's, that's I, that I understand. Image was, that image was funny. I'm I understand the power dynamic behind it where you know, you're, you've been kidnapped and you're on an island and you're 16 years old and it's understood that you're supposed to take care of any of these weird old guys that come there. I, I understand that. And that's extremely illegal and gross, but I'm also saying like Stephen Hawking, if you're unable to move, how can you be proven? I'm going down a bad path here. I'm yeah, going down dude, a bad I mean, path. think he can hit a lot of buttons, man. And you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to know what was programmed he, onto. He hit the buttons. I don't think he could hit buttons. That what? What was all the noise? He, 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 he made he made something to where like he would look at the iPad. He look at the screen and it follows the eyes and then it, he's typing with his eyes. Oh, I he thought I think back in the day he used to hit buttons. Anyway, he was looking at stuff. He was definitely <laughs> looking at stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's looking at stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, but that's let me too. let me get down to what exactly was accused of Stephen Hawking and Let's where he Let's falls get into in it. this. So, uh, something went viral. Uh, everyone was talking about it. <clears throat> um, did Stephen Hawking? <clears throat> sorry. So, um, the there was an image that went around that looked like an affidavit, looked like a court document. That uh, was a Q&A between something they thought was uh, a victim. The the It said, question, hold on one sec. Wait, are you telling me that Stephen Hawking frequented the island for pleasure? Uh, and you can tell this is fake because no one puts in court documents Q&A as opposed to like defend it, like different stuff. So uh, it then said, yes, Jeffrey loved to have intellectuals visit the island so he could reward them for their hard work with humanity and other, and for other darker reasons. Did Jeffrey ever talk to you about Stephen Hawking's proclivities? Yes, he liked watching undressed midgets solve complex equations on a too high up chalkboard. Yeah, so he liked to watch naked midgets solve complex equations on too high up of a chalkboard. That That's is fake. fake. That is fake. It's fake. I just want to confirm that people who may have gotten tricked by this, it was yeah. fake. This is who, what, who are those people in the room with us right now, Billy? <laughs> they're not in your room. Um, <laughs> the people who, got who got tricked by that? saying it out loud. Did you realize, wow, I probably shouldn't have gotten tricked by this. No, the first, the first time I heard this was actually on Saturday night. I was at a bar and, uh, one of, <laughs> and this random person comes up to me. He was actually a Macrodosian and he goes, Yo, what do you think of the Stephen Hawking stuff? And I was like, No, I didn't see it. I was, I, I was on a plane. Like, what happened? He goes, Turns out he was at Epstein's Island looking at uh, little people doing stuff on a chalkboard. Like, and he found it funny because, and I was like, What? And he was like, Yeah, you got to think like, like you know, something about uh, people not being able to do stuff that he could do on a chalkboard. Also, this guy totally believed it. Like gives him some sick rush because he could do all the math in his head, but he, like seeing other people struggle with being able to do something probably got him off because he was able, not able to do a lot. And I was like, 
yeah, man, what the hell? This is crazy. This, I mean, if you're like getting your sickest desires, like what the hell? So anyway, looked it up. Stephen Hawking is not totally unmentioned though. So in the rest of the documents, now you can tell these are confirmed because these include emails between Jelaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. So in these, the exact email is, so it's reading, and by the way, Jeffrey Epstein writes like a total like douchebag because he writes expecting the other person to understand what he's saying. Like he writes like a super villain who has shit on most world leaders writes because like you have to figure out what he's saying. You can't like, he's not going to do grammar or edit stuff for you. It's like one of the most narcissistic writing styles I've seen ever. No grammar. I mean, I am guilty of typos, but it's because like I lack focus. This stuff is just brother of all things to criticize Epstein of. I don't I think we can skip past. His grammar but if you read, if you're reading his emails, you can see this and you're like, oh, my God, this guy's a psychopath. So. So uh, this is regarding Virginia Goof Jufri. I, I haven't I haven't heard this name out loud. I've just read it. Jeffrey. Uh, who is basically accusing, was one of the first accusers, said she had relationships with Prince Andrew, um, Bill Clinton, all sorts of stuff. So uh, he said, you can issue a reward to any Virginia's friends, acquaintances, family that come forward and help prove her allegations are false. The strongest is the Clinton dinner and the new version in the Virgin Islands that Stephen Hawking participated in an underage orgy. So okay. crazy. So Stephen Hawking is alleged to have participated in an underage orgy in the way that he is saying this that her allegations that her, so I think in this message he's trying to communicate that her allegations that the Clinton dinner happened and the Virgin Islands a accusation that had Stephen Hawking in an underage orgy. So those two things. So either J Jeffrey had, and she's the woman I think in the picture with Prince Andrew alleged that Stephen Hawking had participated in underage orgy in the Virgin islands. Okay. So that is how he's involved in this whole thing. Someone else who is involved in one. Remember we were saying, who do you think is involved in the list? Like, and we were just naming random people, someone that you wouldn't think in a thousand years, like someone who like a name that's probably like, like in your subconscious and you've probably seen him on cable television at one point, David Copperfield, the magician. Yeah. Not so, surprised. Why would people not think David Copperfield? I don't know. I haven't thought about David Copperfield since I was only allowed to watch the History Channel as a child because uh, he would just pop up sometimes. Magicians are creeps. I think you kind of have to be a creep to get into the world of magic. Your entire premise is like, I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to I'm gonna do something and then people are going to think I'm God. But it's going to be a trick. I'm going to lie to people and it's going to be such a good lie that they'll think I'm a God. Magicians are weird guys, very strange people. So mm. his his I'm, alleged I'm some good magicians, man. I yeah, Oz was a cool guy. Mentalist, that's different. Okay. So um sometimes I, sometimes I hire uh magicians to come to the house and uh they do like they do a little performance for all my all my kids. It's it's fun. I they seem normal to me, bro. Keep an know. eye on them. <laughs> we we had like five in the office last week. Yeah, it's, or four it's maybe. Magic January. And there were weirdos, right? I'm not. I'm um, not here. I'm not here. To <laughs> what is this magician hate, hate brother? <laughs> I just watched. That What's what was that word that they use that sounds like a slur for magicians? I'm forgetting it right now. A uh, gick. <laughs> the yak one. Yeah. What's a gick? Or, <laughs> it's no, a magician. Jick. A magician. Jick. Jick. It's, like, it's, it's a slur for jick. magicians. Okay, got it. <laughs> magic. It's so yeah, David Copperfield really not repping the the jicks well. So so this is a quote. So it's alleged 
Uh, and this was just in a summary document that said David Copperfield was at a dinner at Epstein's and there was another girl present who looked young and Joanna asked what school she went to and Joanna did not recognize the school name as being a college and she said it was possible it was a high school age girl. Joanna said Copperfield questioned me if I was aware that girls were getting paid to find other girls. So Copperfield knew. So he's the big name? He's one of the big names that have just recently come out. So then as of right before the recording, uh, there's tons of these reports that Bill Clinton, Richard Branson, and Prince Andrew all had sex tapes released. So I've been, I found the exact quote where that was said, but then while we were uh, talking, I sort of been scamming all the quotes released and they all seemingly are from this one woman who after reading a lot of this, uh, it kind of starts to become apparent that she's sort of just writing fan fiction, kind of, and then she retracted her whole statement at the end to the author. It kind of seemed like a troll job. Um, but this, Billy, Billy before you go any story. further, I just, I need to, maybe you can explain this to me. So this whole thing, all the information I've seen on this whole thing has never been from like a real news source. All this stuff is just on weird Twitter accounts. Why, yeah. why is there no major news outlets reporting on this? So there are a lot of run with this new headline that recently just came out about the, the sex tapes, but I'm reading uh, the actual files and it's from courtlistener.com. It's a free law project, 501c3. Um, and you can find like tons of any release court document basically. And I'm reading these and this one that recently came out seems pr the, the testimony seems pretty faulty. And, uh, basically all these documents that are being released are any of the evidence submitted to the court. Um, so, uh, in this one, she's talking about how basically this woman, she has had sexual relationships to almost everybody involved in the case, be it uh, his lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, uh, who was one of the lawyers that re represented Jeffrey when he went to trial, made huge endorsements to the Clinton Foundation to help fund her 2008 president ca campaign. I personally met Alan numerous times uh, and he tried to rape me several times. It, like they got Dershowitz is a real creep. He was he was Clinton's attorney. I think yeah. it was Trump's attorney, too, for a little bit. Yeah, I uh, can. And he spent oh. like the last 20 years trying to change age of consent laws. Yeah. I got a, I got a question about the Stephen Hawking thing. So he didn't get accused of anything. I'm just, I, I'm just trying to, yes. get, I, I don't really understand what's going on. So he didn't get accused of anything, but Jeffrey Epstein sent an email. Yes. Because there was somebody that had an accusation that, that he was there participating yes. in something. Yes. He was trying to get his name cleared. Basically, he was offering to pay people to discredit this woman who had made several allegations and some of them we know to be true um, because she's pictured with several individuals that uh, apparently happened. But this is where that testimony is different than what I'm currently reading because this accuser is sort of doing a QAnon fan fiction that she was basically – she claims that the Clinton that she was given a substantial payout directly from the Clinton Foundation to keep quiet. She's 100 percent certain the FBI did a cover up and she has the individual names of Hillary's special agent officers involved in intimidating her. She was then forced against her will to sign a legally binding confidentiality agreement on Hillary's behalf. So this like she's saying that like special secret service and Hillary's special agents are chasing her and like sort of a lot of crazy stuff which i i don't think is true she's also anti she says that trump she slept with trump she slept with ever, like tons of people she was forced to mm -hmm. and if this is true like literally we should have a civil war but if it's it's a lot of it's sort of kind of schizo -y. is that the picture they're talking about no this ain't it that's him in the islands but that's what i'm saying that's the yeah so he offered money to what i'm saying is that is that him on the island because if that is no no he's in the virgin islands which so is, is different it. from uh the epstein's uh, island is next Saint, to the virgin islands 
Yeah, but it's called Saint uh Saint James, little Saint, Saint James. Little so Saint the dude James. by so the dude by him, there's an older white dude by him in a white shirt. Mm-hmm. His name is Kip Thorne. He is also a scientist. They had a famous bet about uh black holes. Um ironically. Uh yeah. it was a famous bet about black holes. And so like I recognized it. So I I don't know if this was on I saw I was checking to see if this was on Epstein's Island or not. It may have. It may have been. I can't. But apparently he frequented the Virgin Islands. Um, Kip Thorne may have gone to. He may be a name. So um, they said um, this this woman's name, Sarah Ransom, uh, in 2016, claimed she had copies of tapes that Epstein made of President Trump, former President Clinton, Prince Andrew and Richard Branson, allegedly having sex with an unnamed woman. Y- yeah, he's really. Epstein and Kip Thorne were associates. He, he Epstein funded a lot of uh, research, and he I think that was at the island. Hey. Yeah. So, but see, and this is where I like I'm, I I just don't know where to go with this because he did hold a lot of like uh, benefits stuff like that. So are we then accusing everybody he did that with? Of that, that's that's a that's a hell of an accusation to make because they were associated. I I don't know, you know what I'm saying I have no yeah. idea, but it's just it's just, it gets murky, man. I mean, who knows what exactly? Who's from the sounds of it, and we can look to Ghislaine Maxwell's father, who is now admittedly a Mossad agent. Like he's buried in a like basically the equivalent of. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the cemetery outside DC where a lot of war Arlington heroes. National. Yeah. Arlington, basically equivalent to their Arlington national cemetery in Israel. So we don't know if there's a huge intelligent intelligence operation that was trying to blackmail several world leaders to control their, you know, we don't know, like, for example, the scientists might've not been like a good target to blackmail because what are you going to do with them? Like make them say something different about black holes like what does that do like I mean, if, for... if it's a prominent scientist that's in charge of a big institution there's probably some levers that you can pull i'm I'm still convinced that they were working like the epsteins and maxwell's they were assets or providing information to the cia maybe Mossad, um and then in a previous life he was doing that but for wall street and he was while yeah. also being a creep and a pedophile um, yeah but yeah what i want to go back billy why'd you say that there's gonna be a civil war no, I, that was just like we should have a whole upheaval if every if what this person is describing happening that like Hillary Clinton has like a bunch of secret agents like doing her bidding and it's it's her whole testimony was like kind of the best way to describe it a schizo post. Yeah. For didn't, lack of uh, didn't uh, Bill Gates' wife divorce him because a part of the reason was because of his relationship with uh, Epstein? Yeah. Yeah. And lying about his relationship with Epstein and also that weird thing where he would get to go spend like a couple mm-hmm. weeks a year with his high school, high school girlfriend. But then did you realize that right after the divorce, all this stuff started coming out about Bill Clinton being like a ladies man who like, like to party with strippers. And like, that was the reason to yeah. like, he like came out of the wall street journal. Like he definitely was cashing tons of favors from the media being like, make it look like I got divorced because I was cheating with, grown women strippers yeah hot chicks a lot of hot yeah. babes yeah Co- add some cocaine in there make me look cool <laughs> yeah i mean well trump definitely knew what epstein was up to because there was an interview that he gave where he was talking about epstein and he said uh he was like putting a warning shot out there to him do you remember that yeah and he was like yeah jeffrey epstein you know there's no doubt about it he loves he loves the ladies some would say more than i do and uh he definitely likes them on the younger side so he yeah. said that was an intentional jab that Trump was putting out there. Like, I got dirt on you. Yeah. And then a, a recent quote from the documents says the exact same thing about Bill Clinton. That one I can, from the uh, testimony, seems a little more grounded in reality. Well, see, even then, like, I'm like, that that silence is almost complicit. Because, yeah. like, if I know that shit is going on, I'm not sending no warning shots for no kind of leverage or favors. I'm like, yo, he has an island where he's running underage girls. Like, that's gross. 
If you knew for that long. Put it to you this way. Would it shock anybody in this room to know that Bill Clinton and Donald Trump had sex with like a 16 or a 17 year old at some point? Wouldn't shock me. In high school. It wouldn't shock you to know that like 45, 50 year old Donald Trump had sex with a 16 year old. No, it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me. And Clinton shocked me less. Clinton would shock, but like if the thing is, is if they knew, because a lot of people might have been like, uh, not sugar trapped, honey trapped by thinking that the woman was of age. And then it was like, gotcha. There, there is a possibility that maybe there were like some 17 year old girls there that appeared to be older than they actually were and were told like, Hey, they're 18 and then gotcha. That's the definitely th- a possibility. The thing is, uh, in the Prince Andrew situation in the UK, the woman he slept with, I think is legal under the age of consent. That's the big thing. It's like 16 over there, isn't it? Yeah. That's really strange. It is strange, but they can also drink earlier. So, think you grow faster. Was, was it sixteen over there or fifteen or something like that? What is it? What is the drinking age over there? The drinking age, I think, is eighteen. I think it's eighteen. Oh. Yeah. Well, but I think uh, it's like sixteen for beer, depending on where you are. Billy also sent over a clip of Madison Cawthorn, former U.S. Congressperson. He's no longer in Congress, right? I think he he lost re-election. Yeah. Um, talk about being like the honeypot operations, where there would be you know the most attractive excuse me, attract women in the world coming up to you being like, let's go back to my hotel room. Um, that's just a good general rule of thumb for guys. Like if a, if a super, super attractive woman just comes up to you, is like, Hey, I want to sleep with you. Something weird's going on. Yeah. Okay. Aaron. All right. Mr. Oh, okay. Professional athlete. Bam, 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 yeah. Bam. Okay. But, all right. Sorry. I, 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 I have, that has happened and it's never, <laughs> I, I ain't got no dirt on me. It's, I it, I am I would be in the the one percent though I understand yeah doesn't really happen for podcasters that much <laughs> <laughs> it's just because they can't recognize you because they're listening to you a lot so you got to talk to them a little more yeah talk and then they're like oh yeah you're the guy that does a Chris Berman voice yeah let's mm, go back to my place mm, <laughs> give me a lotto number <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh I might be in a honey I might be trying to get honey potted right now I got a text. Yesterday morning from a number I don't recognize, and it was just two naked pictures of the same girl. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's spam, though. That shit happens. No, I'm getting, it's, she probably is a real person that likes me. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I was getting honey potted. There was, like, someone texted me and was like, hey, want to hang out? Singles in your area. Total honey pot scheme. Yeah. 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 Every time the, I log I, online, I, it's like horny singles looking to meet up. I'm like, this is a honey pot. This I would mean, be a great idea. If there was testing involved, I'm okay with this. In what way? Like, like if there's if there's like a bunch, and you know what? Nah, I just thought about it. Never mind, it's a bad idea. <laughs> I didn't even know what you were saying. So, like, if there's like consenting adults that just didn't like enjoy having sex, like, there should be like an app for that. But then, it, like, it could get weird really fast. Well, it's, welcome it's only to dudes. What? Welcome to dating in 21st century on your phone. <laughs> I don't. I don't met some really good human beings on dating apps, man. I don't. I don't mind it. I think there's some apps like that that are just like like swingers apps, probably swingers or whatever. Well, every like, uh, did you guys hear about the Ashley Madison leak? Yeah, like years uh-huh. ago, just like I, I know. I think I remember the site was like for married people, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Their their motto was "Life is short, have an affair." <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Pretty bad people running that site. Are they? Yeah, connect, look, connect I'd say people. so. Encouraging people to have an affair. Hey, man. Yeah, you're right. All right okay. I mean, if you're if right. you're gonna have an affair, you like, what you think some good monogamous? There's a Rick and Morty episode about this. Yeah, where where there, there's like, uh, I forget his name. I don't know, but some dude was captured and he had to. He had it was like a moral quandary, so he had to like, he had to pay somebody to go kill him. Right. And I think it was Rick gave him the gun and he's like, you can't give him, you can't give it a paid assassin a gun. That's like, that's like pulling the trigger yourself. And he was like, well, I mean, if he's going to kill him anyway, it has nothing to do with me. And and he, had, and he ended up like the, the dude that, that he paid the assassin to go kill 
ended up wanting to kill the entire human race, so he ended up killing them anyway. It's more quantity. Mm. It's good stuff. Yeah, the, huh. the the Ashley Madison, I remember when the leak happened, and it was like, I think it was 90% dudes that had signed up for it. <laughs> of Maybe even more than 90%. And then the people that signed up for the website had to give their email address. So when the leak happened, all these people's emails went public. And I think there were like 15 people that worked at ESPN that used their company email address oh to my sign up God. for it. You deserve to get caught. Yeah, you do. Yeah, but also your company email address would probably make, you know what I'm saying? No. Like it's something that if you were on. Oh, somebody could have put your name on yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense too, yeah. Wait, Just what like to I defame eat? someone? Oh. Yeah. yeah. But I think you had to also verify. Like you, it was a list of people who's, because somebody can use your work email address if they know your work email, and then you have to verify in a link that's sent to your email. Yeah, but, but it's but let's not say... hard for women to find somebody to sleep with. Like, it's hard for dudes, but like women just. Oh, did you hear about that new dating app that you have to get approved by another woman to join it as a guy? Oh, I kind of fuck with that. Huh? Like you, you would have to get like a friend who is a girl to approve you for the dating site to vouch for you. Yeah, I I like that a lot actually. And I think it can't be your sister. <laughs> I'd vouch for all of you guys. Or your mom. Thank you. Yeah, it's my mom. I would let all of you guys on that app. It's my daughter vouches for me. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, what do we want to do for Wednesday's episode? I have an idea. Or Thursdays, we'll tape it on Wednesday. I have an idea. But if anybody else has one, go for it. I want to do the love has one. I think HBO I have an idea. That I think Mad Dog's gonna love. I think I know what you're gonna say. Gypsy, Gypsy Rose. Rose. <laughs> yep. Who are you gonna oh. say, PFT? I was gonna say MLK. Oh. oh. Is it MLK oh, Day? Fuck. On Next Monday. Monday. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm down with that. We do need to do Gypsy Rose at some point. Gypsy Rose. Who's Gypsy Rose? All right. <gasps> so, Wait, no, 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 she's no, no, popping. No. She's popping. I'm so He's sick. Kidding. He's kidding. So sick. I didn't know who she was either till like no, 48 no, hours yeah, ago. Stop yeah. it. Stop this. No. Stop this. Normal people don't know about this. So it's That's a, crazy. It's a woman crazy. who killed her mother. No. Who, who, who did? has like a people love her. Gypsy They're Rose. like, yes, you are. You're awesome. Like, well, we love you. I think. And she just got out of jail and everybody is like treating her like a celebrity and she is eating it up. Like, no, PFT, he's PFT. He big T is, is putting a negative connotation on this story. on killing your mother. Yeah. No, no, uh, that's what just, I'm doing. No, big T, it's, why don't we, why don't we use accomplice. the episode to inform people so they can make their own yeah. decision? Um, I would do an extra dosing with you, Billy on this also, but no, no PFT. What actually happened was her, Mother had Munchausen brought by proxy. Yep. And so, therefore, raised Gypsy to think that she, like, she had her in a wheelchair, said she had leukemia, she had a feeding tube, all of this stuff, obviously, did not. Only reason why I know Munchausen is because of Eminem. And, and sorry, mama. Yeah. For cleaning out my closet. <laughs> Victim of Munchausen syndrome. Thinking you sick and you're <laughs> <Honest. laughs> Imagine your mama pop a pep feels in the kitchen. You know <laughs> All right, Chris D'Elia. Bitches, someone's going through the person just missing. <laughs> I want to do a segment, a, a recurring segment of Aaron just doing Eminem impressions. <laughs> That's pretty good. But she had, so her mom had Munchausen by proxy. So she abused this girl her whole life. And then when she was a teenager a, or a young woman, her and her boyfriend at the time plotted a plan to kill her mother because she was like, I'm stuck in this situation. And I know she figured out that she actually wasn't sick. And so her boyfriend killed her mom and she got charged with accessory for murder and was in jail for the past eight years and just got out. Okay. And she is a becoming a global icon as we there, speak. A There's a lot more in the icon. story. It's a it's it's a very fascinating story, and I am on the exact opposite side of the spectrum as Big T uh, on this issue at hand. Um, Wait, so so what uh, what are the sides? 
go ahead yes slay <laughs> literally <laughs> slay or, or, yeah or... i just i don't understand the like the glorification and the like uh, treating her like a celebrity well she That's... was like it was a really it's a really well known story like i've known about this story for years there's like a i think it's on is it on hbo yeah it, there's a there, series about it yeah there was a series about it this has been in the news for a really long time like the gypsy rose story did not start last week um and she again she, and she said this herself she said what i did was wrong i should have gone to prison i should not have killed my mother she has admitted to all of those things and she did her time um and but also she got abused for 20 plus years and was led to believe that she was this dying child and she just wasn't so now and she got media trained to hell in prison because she she knows how to work a interview now um it's a very fascinating story i guess i can almost understand a fascination i do not get the like she's on every tv show her tick dies uh, tiktok of hers came up on my thing the other day mm -hmm. and everybody's like yes queen like <laughs> you're doing so amazing like this is awesome like i really don't understand that's very well, weird to me the the reality is and i think we're not going to do an episode on this because we're delving into here so i'm, I'm going to add some stuff officially not doing the episode wait are we not <laughs> is that doing a the question episode? fan what <laughs> well are we going to do the episode because well okay. we, we got to save something because so but like she was also sort of a victim of the boyfriend who was borderline, had some mental issues like to cause him to kill somebody. And she was a victim. I think that if she actually a victim. killed her mother herself and explained I was in a prison for my entire life of fake sickness and she was – because her mother was an abuser, was like doing terrible things to her, forcing – like doing great harm, I think she would have a self defense argument. Right, that's the whole thing. And, yeah, and she she admitted that she was addicted to painkillers. Obviously, I mean, how could you not be if you were on medicine and drugs your whole life that you didn't need to be? So she, when she was addicted to painkillers, that is when she decided to kill her mother. So, um, it's it's a very fascinating story because that's the Couldn't other. Couldn't you plead of it. insanity then? Because if you're if you're constantly getting fed shit that you know, n not by your own doing. I think that's why I don't think she didn't. Obviously, she didn't plead insanity, but I think that's part of the reason why her sentence was only eight years because oh, it's all of it's all of that. It kind of formed into one of you know. So she had a boyfriend. She had a boyfriend who actually did the m murder itself, and she plotted with him for the plan to kill that's her. crazy man yeah there's a whole bunch of weird shit going on in the world bro yeah that's yeah. wild can you just tell me like why you like like her it just seems like a really weird thing to be a fan of i i am not as like in i okay i think it's just a su such a fascinating story and i think she actually seems very like sweet honestly like i think she, she was... seems really weird wouldn't you be a weird big t yeah, but I also wouldn't be expecting people to be, like, fans of me. She is very enamored with being on a press tour. Yeah, I, yeah. I like, I, again, I don't see... She's I, been in you, prison. I mean, this is, like... She's been in prison for eight years, and she also was, like, a, a prisoner in a different sense for the rest of her life. I think this is... She has a... She got married in prison. She now is, like, a pseudo-celebrity. I think, I think you... I would be just <laughs> as excited as her. I think it's a lot of... People care about her story because they feel bad for her. And there was a show made about her. And I think people do feel like she was a victim in all of this because of what she went through growing up. And they are happy to see her come out of this and be able to live a normal life. I think that's part of it, too. I think also part of it is also just it's like a funny kind of thing. And when you get out of prison, it's not like you just committed the crime and now you're like happy to be on a press tour. You've just been, you've been in prison for a while. Right. So it's not like you should get out of prison and be like, Oh, I'm so sorry that I just got out of prison. Right. You, you did your time. She's been That's in what... prison her whole life. Yeah. She's yeah. been in some type of prison, like her whole life. She said that when she went to prison, she was the freest she's ever felt. That is a hell of a quote. <laughs> she couldn't eat sugar 
<laughs> okay, well, there was also worse things happening. I know, but like every time she would eat sugar, <laughs> she would like her mom wouldn't let her eat sugar, and every time she like have a little bit of sugar, her mom would stab her with an EpiPen and take her to the emergency room. Yeah, her mom would like chain her to the bed for like weeks at a time. Like it was a very bad situation. I think that you know she it wasn't like she just like point blank shot her mom because she didn't like her mom. Um, so I think, I think it's just like a really fascinating story. I think it's just like yeah. one of those that's really, really interesting. I don't understand how she got jail time. Like how the fuck you get jail time for that? Accessory well, to murder. Still murder. Like yeah. her mom got stabbed. That's self-defense. It's not murder. But she didn't commit it. That's the whole thing. She didn't commit the actual murder. I don't know, man. She was like in the room. She, next or she door. was, yeah. Like she was like next in door. So she, I, I think she would have had a better case for self-defense if she did commit the murder. I think she had a bad lawyer, dog. What? That, that, what? Nothing, well, eight nothing, years is pretty decent for being not, a, But nothing about this screams like, yo, you did wrong. I don't think that's wrong. Y'all think that's wrong? Look into the facts. So no, I, I know what I you're mean, saying. Yeah, obviously, I have not read through the case. Yes. I, but <laughs> I know, what I y'all are telling me here. I understand I what you're saying. Like, she was being physically abused by her mom. Mm -hmm. And... In order to get away from it, she felt like the only way that she could was to kill her mom. Um, you, a good lawyer could make a self-defense argument. I think it kind of falls apart when you have somebody else commit the murder and then you show after the fact that you know what you did was wrong. So she like mailed the murder weapon, traveled secretly, mm -hmm. tried to get away with it. So that kind of tells that she knew that she had committed a crime. Yeah, well, I think but, innately we all feel like taking someone's life is wrong, but yeah. I still don't think what she did was wrong. Even if you have hire an accomplice, like you've been locked in a cage, you have no social skills, you're drugged up all the time, and then you're like, "Dog, I gotta get out of this, but I can't do it. I need some help." I don't see that. That's crazy to me that she did jail time. That's 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 insane. So she gave the guy duct tape, gloves, and a knife with the understanding he would use it to murder her mother. She hid in the bathroom, and after he stabbed her mom 17 times in the back while she was asleep, they went and had sex, and then took $4,000 in cash uh, that the mother had been keeping at the house. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's not self-defense. The sex part makes it tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How does that make it tough? I don't know. I don't think so. Also, like, also, she said she was once she said that she, she's not right in the head. Y'all are discounting the fact that she is not right in the now head. Now that's true, right? But well, due to her mother's actions, right? So anything. Well, that that's why she only got eight years. I don't. Think I think eight years was the appropriate. Still in jail. Yeah, the boyfriend's so. in jail for life. Like the boyfriend got life with no parole. I believe. Yeah, he's. He, I agree with that. That makes sense. But her, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. So hold on. Hold on. I just another thing happened. So. She gets dude to kill her mom, then goes to jail. He gets life, and then she gets married to somebody else in jail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's cold blooded, man. But like, did you see the, hus what the a husband? Simp. What the, a and the husband, husband, like the husband. So Gypsy's husband now, it, Looks. like, was a pen pal. Like started writing to her. She said she got two hundred and fifty like first date yeah requests like, letters to her to ask her out. Hey, well, that's an all-time simp move, dog. That is one of the biggest. <laughs> murder, dog. You, you, you murder your shorty lady. This is for the love, and then you take the rapper. She's, she, she's, she's skating off with another dude. That's just <laughs> but fucked you, up, dog. You know what? They were also on painkillers. So it like she was like I was high. But oh, you guys man. don't understand the the husband looks so much like her mother. Oh, have you seen that? No. I haven't put I have seen her husband. I haven't put two and two together on that. Let me let me send this to the group. If you look at a picture of her husband unrelated, that, that's a fire ass name. Gypsy Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Oh, the Blanchard ruined it. <laughs> also, Big T, I think like she has to get her bag. Why? He got bread? No, the no, husband no. is a special ed teacher. Um because she can't like what is she gonna do? Go to go get a job? Hold on, this shit keeps I don't know, but weird that's ass turns. That's kind of predatory because obviously she got a little mental disorder, and so a man that teaches mentally, you know, troubled children seeks out a woman who's mentally troubled and has just murdered her. But that's but slay though. Oh, shit, but slay queen. <laughs> Go off queen. <laughs> I... That's wild. This that's should have stabbed her an eighteenth time. Oh, that's that's. 
not everybody playing with the same deck of cards, man. It's this is a wild ass story, cause I wow. But she also seems, he like pretty put, put, put together on the other side the circumstances. On the other side, because he was a special ed teacher, he may have the tools that both like help her and can help her progress. Like, and that's no, maybe but it's why predatory. She likes it. But it's predatory. I'm not. I don't know about. I I don't know. Like, like if you're if you if you teach special ed. I don't know if that's the correct term, whatever the correct term is, fill it yeah. in there. But if you teach children with mental disorders and then you seek out women with mental disorders, y'all don't see the predatory behavior in there? Am I am I fucking up? Yeah. Well, like, no, what if you had, like, a bad illness, oh, like a mental illness, and you start dating a therapist and realize that, like, they... That's not where near the same. I think it's kind of the same. No. She was in jail. He sought her out. Like, he sought her out. Like, he sought her out. There's not much he gains from that other than getting his fix. If I have a if I have a mental disorder, or not a mental disorder, if I have emotional issues and I seek out a therapist, that actually makes sense because it's somebody that understands my, you know, issues on a deeper level and maybe emotionally can help me. That seems predatory. I don't know. I'm mean, too, thinking too if deep. The guy, no, if the guy seeks her out, then he is doing that because he knows how to manipulate her perfectly. I think that has, that's why I'm saying it's predatory. Yeah. Hmm. But this is the new it couple guys. We got to be fans. <laughs> you don't have to. Thank goodness. I do think that the name gypsy Rose has a lot to do with it. I think a yeah. lot of that. It, it, that I, I, crazy. Dope if her name was like Sarah, Williams. Do you know what's crazy? I was just thinking Sarah. I almost said Sarah. Yes. If it was like Sarah Sarah Williamson. I don't think that everybody would like slay Sarah. <laughs> Gypsy Rose. Gypsy Rose. I also think part of it Gypsy is Rose that there was fire. that sh there's like a show that came out about it. So I think it it was in the it's national escapism. spotlight already. It's, like pop culture. it's escapism, yes. man. Yeah, it's escapism, man. Yeah. People people love that type shit. It's why that's why don't, I, don't do it's also why I don't know that. I don't know, like when we do that celebrity mashup shit. I don't ever recognize those faces because <laughs> yeah. I've, I've just never been into the lore of like celebrity. That's dumb. why I'm here. Yeah, and so like, I, I mean, I get why people, you know, what I'm saying, because I got my own shit like that, like I, my Valorant shit, like you know, what I'm saying, I, you know, shit that I'm into. I know what I'm into heavy, so like everybody got their thing, man. I don't judge. Yeah, I I just think it's like one of those things that Gypsy Rose is in the national lexicon, and so it's it's just it's a it's just a fascinating like human like not experiment but it's just like something happening where you've i've never seen this happen before and now she's like a celebrity if i ever have thing. a fish i'm gonna name it gypsy rose that's okay. a fire name for a fish <laughs> i think the closest guys get to being fascinated with this munchausen by proxy is like watching a shitty nfl head coach and how they're screwing up a quarterback we're like, yeah, that's that's abuse. <laughs> with, with Josh McDaniels, his fascination with Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, is your shoulder injured or is it not? And Jim, are you going to go in the IR for the rest of the year, Jimmy? Is that because Josh told you you were hurt, Jimmy? That's that's like my fascination with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a wild wild story that's unfolding before our eyes. I watched I watched a newlywed game TikTok of them before I got here this morning. How'd they do? Really well. That's sweet. Yeah. Good for them. Oh, oh, they're new. They're new. She just got out. She just got out last mm -hmm. week, but they got married while she was in prison like a year ago. Who's who's the more iconic romantic couple? Those two are Killian Murphy and his wife. <laughs> oh, with the lipstick on his nose. Yeah. She that marked was, him. She, that was cute. She I marked him sweet. up good. She was like, you're going to get on TV. <laughs> there are going to be girls out there pining for you. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave my mark on you so they know that you're taken. Right. <laughs> no, I... No, that was cute. That was very cute. Killian Murphy? Who's yeah, that? the guy played who Oppenheimer. was Oppenheimer. Oh, okay. British ass dude. He won a Golden Globe. He also played... Arthur Shelby. No. No, Arthur. Thomas. Thomas. He was Peaky Blinders Shelby. guy, too. He's an... I mean, he's like Tommy. a very famous actor. It's Devil's Walk at Night, Tommy. Yeah, so he, he won a Golden Globe, and he went up on stage, had his wife's lips all over him. <laughs> Lipstick marks. Like, you just... I just love the Golden Globes. <laughs> And everyone's drunk at the Golden Globes. That's also fun. Yeah. If if everyone was hammered at the Oscars, I would like that. <laughs> yeah. It would just lighten the mood, I think. Yeah. I want to go on a red carpet. Have I, That's my new goal. 
for 2024. It's my didn't we just have an show. award show? You don't yeah, I didn't get invited. So. Do you want to walk on the red carpet? I, I want to walk on the red carpet. And I want people to take a picture of me. And You're I so pose. shy, though. Why? That doesn't fit your personality. I am. I don't think I'm shy. I think I want people to take pictures of me on the red carpet. I want to wear a fancy dress. We can work that out. We can figure out some sort of red carpet for you to get called on. Thank to. you. Someone, I tweeted it last night. I said, I just want to walk on a red carpet now after the show. And someone was like, is there a podcast awards show? <laughs> and now I kind of want to see if there's a podcast awards show that we can get nominated for. There are podcast award shows, but they're all a crock of shit. So basically you have to like nominate yourself. You have to pay money to be submitted. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone salty, salty. No, this is just the facts. <laughs> ah, salty. Then, then they want you to fly out on your own dime to their award show and promote their award show. You so may. what they're doing is they're they're you getting you smart. <laughs> you know a lot about this, BFT. They're get yeah. They try to get people to promote their company that that sponsors the award show. Oh, I found I found one that I think you might be talking about. I won't say it on the air though. I don't want to risk our chances of being nominated. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, no. See, my... you got to suck their dicks. <laughs> you got to you got to play ball with them. Yeah, yeah. No, that's we got to get thing. this water. We got to get this water, dog. <laughs> that's my that's my next thing is I want to walk on a red carpet. Um I hated it. Oh, like with nope. a passion. Oh, Aaron. There was the last the last red carpet I got invited to was the it was the NFL um what is Honors? this? Shit? Yeah, it's Jennifer Honors Jump. And uh, we got off the bus. And I was like, I don't want to do this shit again, man. I was like, do I have to? And they was like, no, I mean, you don't have to. She like, it's a good look, though. And I was like, I'm not doing it. And so I just went behind everybody. Like, everybody <laughs> taking pictures. I, just, I went behind all the cameras. I hate red carpets with a passion, bro. Oh, my it's God. So, no, I want to be It's just so pretentious. So like, you just, you walk a little bit, you look, and you pose, and you walk a little bit. And I can't pose for shit. I'm not... <laughs> Arian, I have about seven poses lined up in my head that I would hit already. I have this down. Let me see it. In hit one. Head. Let me see it. No, you got to do like the over the shoulder. Like, you, you <laughs> can't see me. No, I but, can't see you. No, Here's you me. on a red carpet at the ESPYs. You look nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was before I didn't. Uh, that, was, that was 2010. Yeah. That no, was, like, was Arian, if you're show. ever, or like, I guess all of you, like if you, if anyone ever has a plus one or red carpet, like, let me know. I will, I will show up and I will show out. I think it'd be so fun. <laughs> and then I get to do like the red carpet, like the slow mo camera. Is that all of them? No, oh, but so I want that, that too. The, the, the 360. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Arian, can you explain to me? Here's one, um, a red carpet esque uh, thing, it appears. You're holding just a piece of printer paper yeah, with I'm Ryan Fitzpatrick too. written on it. What was that about? <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen uh, the uh, ESPN party. Send, send, send it. Send it. Yeah. It's just a blank piece of white paper, <laughs> and it says Ryan Fitzpatrick, and he's holding it up like like he's picking him up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Oh, I am lit. Um, <laughs> this was 2000, I want to say either 14 or 15. I'm super lit. So, like... I don't remember exactly. Is that the why. chain Big T war in Tennessee? That is that chain. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! I don't know why I'm. I have no idea though. <laughs> that thing was say. heavy as fuck. Oh, how you doing? Are you wearing know. cat? Are you wearing Sperry's? This is no, at no, no, the no, Super Bowl, Sperry's. I believe, in 2015. Don't ever let me find a picture of Arian Foster wearing Sperry's. <laughs> it will be the death of him. Sperry I used to have some Sperry's. Well, you call everybody Sperry wearers. That's how I know. What they is, because I used to have some. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a whole bunch of them wearing them, and I was like, what are those? And Arian, are and <laughs> Arian and khakis is a new look for me in this picture as well. You and khakis is not a, a I used to. I used to have a lot of clothes, Maddie. But, like, khakis I don't see you in. I used to have clothes. I used to I used to dress well, but, like, I just stopped caring. This other picture of you at the SBs, you're in, like, a red and white checkered shirt with the bow tie? You're kind of fitted up in this. No, I used to, I used to dress, like, nice. But I like it's don't. nice, it's nice you're throwing on like kind of like a fun little suit, and you're not wearing just like a black suit, you know, no f no flavor to it. No, 2011 ESPYS, you kind of kind of hit that. Over, man, this is what you're getting from here on out. You're <laughs> getting sweats and flip flops, Arian. <laughs> no, 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 no. But when we hit the red carpet, the six of us, it's gonna be crazy. I'll, I'll, I'll if I ever get invited to another red carpet, I'll go with you, Maddie. Okay, cool. Give me my plus one. We can we can get it. I got you. <laughs> I'm not walking on that motherfucker, but you can. Matter of fact, you hold a picture. I'll hold up you, Arian yeah, hold up Arian. Yeah, yeah. Hold, maybe I'll, I think that might have been what has happened. <laughs> in memory of. Oh my god, I would die. That's all I want. I just want a red carpet. Oh. I think I can. I think I, I'm. I, if I really wanted to, I can go to like every ESPYS. Like I know the people there. 
I'm sure I could, but oh I just I have no. I have SPs no have fallen off so hard. But I'd want to go. I just hate that shit. You sit in the crowd and it's like, it's just that's I hate award shows. I hate people. But you see so many famous people. I don't like them. <laughs> he is. One. PFT, have you ever been on a red carpet? I've been on a couple. Yeah, not that fun. Wait. <laughs> PFT red. I don't it, know doesn't if that feel pictures. kind of pretentious? It feels pretentious, doesn't it? It does. It's like everyone look at me. And it's like it, a lot I of pressure, I feel like. It's like more to, for press. It like bad. originally it was for the press back in the day. Like now that we have cameras everywhere, we should ban red carpet. No. Ban. It's not very libertarian of each other. Well, not they're just they're just useless. Agreed. We will get we'll get Mad Dog on a red carpet. Yes, I want we'll one so bad. Even if we have to do it here at the office. I have my whole routine down. Like I literally practiced it last night. I was. You better not fuck it up then. No, I won't. I won't. Ain't I there a Barstool was... Award Show or some shit like that? There was, and I didn't get the invite. It's fine. That's we crazy. Should, we should do the Big science of a red mm -hmm. carpet walk for a science experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. How to slay a red carpet. Yeah. All right, so Thursday's episode. We can do MLK. MLK. Yeah, let's do MLK. I think good time to do it right before MLK Day. Can we get Darren Ravel on? <laughs> oh, that'd be so awesome. <laughs> How many pieces of MLK he owns? <laughs> well, he's got some of his closest friends are black too, he, and he capitalized black. That's how you know he's an ally. It's just, it's just <laughs> funny that you would call him racist. It's just very funny. Wait. <laughs> oh my God. What if we invited him on and told him to bring the artifacts because we're doing MLK? And then we just stole them from him and gave it to a museum. <laughs> there should be in a museum. <laughs> like, oh we just God. jump him and take all his MLK merch and give it to the Smithsonian of, uh, <laughs> I forget the exact name of civil rights. Yeah. All right. So we'll do MLK, uh, on Thursday's episode. Mm -hmm. And, yep. uh, yeah, we will see you guys then. Okay. But real quick, I never got an answer about Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, I, I literally don't like those Super Bowl parties, dog. You get lit, and that's what that's what you go for. You get lit, you get a few appearances, you get paid, and man, that 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 memory has escaped me, my brother. Do they do cool gift bags at Super Bowl parties like they do for the Oscars and shit, where people get like oh, yeah. TVs oh, yeah. and stuff? I don't know if I ever got a TV, but it's a whole bunch of like electronics, watches, shit like that. Yeah, man. God. God, this sounds so fun. I don't want to ever, like, uh, Madeline cares about, like, being on a red carpet show. I don't want that, but I do want a gift bag from, like, a cool <laughs> party like that. No, okay, so Big T, this is what we'll do. I'll go on the red carpet, and I'll get you that gift bag. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are funny, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, the more I think about it, the more I want it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right, we will All right, see you guys on Thursday. Love you guys.